Okay, the stream is live now, I believe. So we'll get started. Uh, see if people join though. <laughs> All right, let me set up a few things first anyway. Hey, so if you guys are just joining, I'm setting up a few things and then we'll get started pretty soon. How did you tell one? <laughs> you tell one. Uh, I was actually in Seoul yesterday, but uh, I did not go to you tell one. All right, so sorry for starting a bit late. And also, I wanted to let you guys know again that as a friendly reminder, I know the background looks really ugly and everything. And it's because I'm waiting for some equipment to arrive for my uh, camera to be used instead of my laptop camera and so yeah that's why the background looks like this um, it'll have like better lighting and stuff later and yeah so today we're gonna be just looking at Facebook do some doing some valuation um, DCF analysis on it this uh, this DCF is gonna be a lot simpler than the Tesla one if you guys joined for that one the Tesla one we worked on together for like six hours and for over two streams and that one still not um, ready, right? But then, uh, or it's not done, wait, sorry, one second. It says the stream is not working. Can you guys, uh, can you guys in the chat let me know if the stream, uh, if you're the video and the chat is all okay? Oh, clocks went back an hour in Europe this week. Oh. Okay, so I guess I'm early, I'm not late. I thought I was, I actually thought I was late um, because I'm pretty sure in Korea, let's see. I'm in London. Oh. I'm in California. Okay. Oh, interesting. So I guess there's daylight savings in Europe, but not in, not in uh, California. But it's not. There's not in Korea either. So that's why I got confused. Okay. Um, but anyway. So yeah, we're gonna be, we're gonna be. Uh, yes, it's late for Asia, but. Um, I realized that most of my most of the people who speak English live in this US and Europe and so even though I'm in Korea I decided to just do it late in Asia and uh, to kind of serve the US slash like North America audience in Europe um, and I'm gonna so yeah we're gonna just be doing a Facebook valuation DCF this one's gonna be not as detailed as the Tesla one in, in fact it's gonna be um, pretty short, I'd say. Maybe I'm gonna try to finish in like two hours or or less. And yeah, I guess we'll just we'll just see uh, how it turns out. But um, okay, so this is visible alpha. I've showed you guys this in the Tesla one before, and basically I'm just gonna be grabbing historical figures for Facebook. 
Uh, and yeah, you guys will see what this looks like in a bit. I'm gonna need interims. Okay, let's see, revenue. Uh, Hmm, it's a lot of stuff here. Okay, might as well just get everything. All right, so this is just going to download some data, and I'm just going to answer some chats, uh, chat questions or anything if there are any while this downloads. Okay, I guess there are no questions. Open the door, drink some tea. Yeah, Tesla, Tesla one was very long. Uh, but that's kind of how you have to build it if you want to do like a real revenue build, right? And I'm going to try to do the finish the Tesla one in the next one to two weeks. I haven't scheduled it out yet. This database is called Visible Alpha. Okay. Hmm. My computer's super laggy. You guys happen to know how to fix, is anyone good with computers and know how to fix like a laggy stream? Cause I didn't change any of the settings since the last time. Um, it says here, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Hmm. Okay. Facebook slash meta DCF. Okay. Uh, sorry, when, let me... We're going to call this quarterly data. And then let's see. So I'm being a little quiet. I'm just concentrating on setting stuff up and then I'll Try to answer some questions and walk you guys through what I'm doing and stuff. All right, downloading some more data. Um, 
bit change bit rate. Okay, let me try to change my bit rate. Last time I tried to change my bit rate, it lagged a little bit, but let's try it. Visible alpha, I can't give the pricing, but you could say around 1K per month. It's lagging again. Hopefully it fixes itself soon. Uh, new Dougie looks good. <laughs> Thanks, Richie. Um, Activision Blizzard. I haven't really looked into them. The bitrate is at 7K right now. So we'll see. Oh, I... Hmm. Okay, well hopefully it fixes everything else. Uh, it, it gets fixed soon. But I'm gonna just keep moving on. Let's see, will I use quarterly more? All right, so I'm uh, like I like I said earlier, I'm gonna build out a pretty simple DCF, and the reason partially is because Facebook is they have like meta the metaverse thing happening, and things are gonna be a little bit more complicated. But in general, right now at least, their business model has been around for a while, fairly predictable. Um, and so I'm just gonna do a very broad DCF using a lot of just historicals and some street estimates. Not gonna be building out revenue build or anything like that. Um, and yeah, this is just for a general idea of what Facebook should be valued at. So that's the outline for today, very simple. Um, so let's see, uh, let's just build out the simple stuff first. So we have our, we're gonna get our revenue, margin, taxes. And this is all the building block stuff for the, uh, to get to our free cash flow. So that's what I'm building out here. And then we'll do capital expenditures. Well, let's see, we'll, we, yeah, we would do DNA first. Um, do you think the new image solves your bad publicity problem? Nope, I don't think so. I also don't think that it's like a distraction per se. I honestly, I think I have friends who work at Facebook and I, I'd be pretty worried if a lot of them were leaving and they were unhappy. But almost all of my friends who work there enjoy their experience and they're kind of on Facebook side. Uh, one friend kind of mentioned that there's a lot of internal criticism that happens that is usually pretty loud and people um, inside criticize the company and like kind of decide where things should be going and stuff. And 
because like there uh, after hearing that it also gave me a little comfort because I, I don't think people at the company are actually evil which is what a lot of people in uh, the media kind of portray facebook as this evil company but I, and i don't think facebook is not totally not in the wrong either they've made a lot of user data type type of issues but i think what facebook um you know grew up in in terms of their culture in the 2000s is where you know every startup in that setting grew up in the don't ask for permission uh what was the f- phrase it was like uh something like do it first ask for permission later um ask for, for- or ask for forgiveness later something like that right but these uh, a bunch of tech companies grew up with the culture of um doing things quickly and then asking for forgiveness later and i think facebook kind of like was in grew up in there in that culture didn't try to wasn't trying to do the wrong thing per se but it's a company that's trying to manage like um free speech right and it's like impossible to please everyone so that's like a very rough overview of kind of what i think happened but yeah facebook has a lot of um a lot of like things it needs to work on for sure uh all right so let's see here I'm just, I'm honestly, I'm looking for out a lot of this data for the first time. And I'm going to try to think about what I really want to build out because I could make revenue a little bit detailed with the different st- revenue streams that the company has. But it's really like Facebook is the vast majority of it is just advertising. A very small portion is Oculus and then payment and other fees. So it's like, a 95 percent all advertising and you can also break it down by revenue and look at the different countries and see break it down that way and project out that way as well but like i said this is going to be a pretty simple dcf so um, let me see if you guys have any questions. So, um, hope this gets posted. Yep, I'll be posting. What do I think about making a video and you can answer questions like a special for 50k subscribers? Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to do an ask me ask me anything kind of thing. Um, so, I'll try to do that in the next few weeks. Okay, so a lot of interesting data here. The revenue. Cash flow advertising revenue. And I'm just looking at some of the information we have. Okay, yeah, this is like kind of too much data. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna analyze the overall just income statement for the past year or, or annual. And then from there, basically just build out the DCF. Okay, let's see. Oh, is my camera still frozen? Let me check my stream. The stream also lags when I talk. The It doesn't actually show the chats until like a little bit later. So wait, let me try changing my bit rate oh still frozen okay
Hmm. I don't know why it's still frozen. I'm trying to fix it. All right, if you're watching a replay of this in the future, you probably just want to skip to the next few minutes because I'm just trying to fix the um, fix the settings right now. Okay, I'm gonna try Googling this. Stream camera frozen. Okay, I, if I disable and re-enable, it should work. So let me try that. Okay, it should be fixed now. Um, we'll see, wait. Oh well, well, I'm just gonna keep going and then hopefully it, it fixes itself soon. Okay, uh, so let's see, let's look at revenue income or the income statement. Um, okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna just mainly go off of the income statement here and then work off of that. And that's as detailed as, as we'll get. Okay, so let's see, we have 2011, starting 2011 to 2020 probably more than we really need but oh well so this is our starting of our projected year um, and then I'm just gonna link to our figures here so 2011 revenues here up to 2020. Calculate our growth. Okay, and you see Facebook has been growing pretty steadily. It's trending downwards just because the company is so massive now, but it's not not really like alarming by any means. So let's see, and then we have cost of revenue, gross profit, marketing, sales, research and development, general, administrative. I'm not sure if we're necessarily gonna be using all of this, but I will just add them just in case. So cogs, I'm just gonna re rename this too. Hogs, 
dropx. So let's check this. Okay, so this looks right. Okay, uh, answering a few questions. Everything seems good, just your image and voice freezes from time to time. Okay, hmm. I guess compared to my last stream, there are some new issues that, I didn't change anything, so I don't know why it's, there's an issue, but okay, I'll try to fix it for the next stream. And then visible alpha, I only used after JPM actually. Um, welcome Marco from Italia or Italy. Um, the metaverse will catch on. They're hiring 10,000 people. Big risk. Yeah, I think it's a big risk. It's something definitely that needs to be um, kind of like checked on over time. But you know, you'd rather have a company that's investing in new growth initiatives versus just like trying to only milk their current cash producing assets or businesses. Like I mentioned in my previous video, like I IBM. So you, you want to see a company investing. Um, I'm thinking it'd be really good if you see, if you could see what keys you're pressing somewhere. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I could do that. The closest thing I can show is just the alt. When I press alt, there's some things that pop up on the top. And I would honestly just recommend um, I mean, I'm trying to remember how I learned, but I just learned on the job. Um, I just Googled very often, like what, oops, wait, this is percent of sales. So gross profit. So um, the reason I'm doing percentage of sales is uh, it's just a very common way to look at your margins. Um, you often see this as percent of sales or percent margin. Gross. This could be gross profit margin. And as your sales grow, your costs grow. So that's just why a lot of people usually look at your percentage of sales. And so, like for example, you can see here that your cost of goods sold is roughly, you know, at the very lowest 13%, at the highest 25% back here. But, you know, you the mo most, you know, three to five years of a company historicals is probably the more accurate numbers if you're projecting. And so if you look at these five years or so, you see that the numbers are pretty steady, right? And that's helpful for DCF. It means that we can more accurately project out free cash flow. So th that's where you're looking at here. But sometimes, you know, like here, you see a huge difference. And it's not, you'd probably have to dig a little deeper to see why. Um, how do I know which revenue build is correct? There is no correct revenue build. You kind of just have to use what the company like how the company does it or use whatever method the company uses that's usually the most accurate because that's the way you'll get the most accurate data all right so let's see okay we got the costs now we should calculate our i'm also really glad that you guys find the clicks um, from my keyboard, I, like I, it's good that you guys find it a good good noise because I was actually worried when I was setting up the stream that it'd be too noisy. So it's actually a good thing. Um, okay, and then EBIT stands for 
earnings before interest after taxes or earnings before interest and taxes sorry and it's your gross profit minus your operating expenses All right, so we got our EBIT, and then let's look at our taxes. Oh, we also have EBITDA, okay. Does this match our cash flow statement though? Let's see, depreciation, amortization. Nice, looks like the numbers match. Um, interest and other income. Income before loss, okay. Provision, net income. All right, let's see. Let me see what I, we actually need in here. Interest and other income slash expenses net. Income slash loss before provision for income taxes. Provision benefit for income taxes. Net income. Uh, so I'm guessing this is like non-controlling interest. And then the net income attributable, attributable to common stockholders. Okay. Just to be sure, I want to look at Facebook's uh, filings. Oops. All right. Thirty-three thousand one hundred eighty. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna answer a few of your guys' questions here before I lose them. Do I think Facebook? Free cash flow E, fee, F, C, F, E, or F, C, F, F is sensible. I'm trying to, hmm, not really sure what those are actually. Should you use negative number for expenses? Um, that's just up to when you're modeling. You can make it positive or negative. It's up to you. Doesn't really matter. For accuracy, okay. EBIT should contain DNA. Uh, EBIT is, uh, DNA is embedded into EBIT. If you do EBITDA, then it adds back DNA. Revenue to project revenues before just to, okay, not sure what that is. Mm. What revenues to projects revenues before GST? Okay, I'm not sure what GST is actually. Um, Sir, so what? Okay, yeah, Legit, you don't need to, you don't need to uh, and ask your question multiple times. Also, I'm, I don't really know what your question is. All right, uh, and welcome to the stream, Matthew. Thanks for joining. 
Okay, tax in India. I don't I don't really know about taxes in India. So free cash flow to firm or free cash flow to equity, which is one more sensible for SaaS companies to consider? Uh, SaaS companies. Well, I just know for DCF, you normally want to do it for the firm. Um, and I don't really know. I'd have to look into that question, Jetra. But generally for DCF, you're only going to be um, looking at the to free cash flow to the firm. All right. So anyhow, let me kind of just work through these. So interest and other income expense. The only thing I'm a little concerned about right now is that I want these numbers to match up. But some of them are not really matching up. So let's see. Uh, this is hard to read. Um, let's see. Okay, so net income is twenty one twenty nine thousand one hundred forty six for twenty twenty. That does not match up to this. Thirty three thousand six hundred sixty two. That's really weird. Okay, well, revenue matches, costs of goods sold, little different, but close, gross profit, revenue, research and development, 13, while it's 18 here. Hmm, GNA is 6.6, .6 while it's six here. This is really odd. This is a problem also with using databases. Sometimes the numbers just don't match up. Okay, this one matches up. Net income. So there's just something that's going on a little bit different. I just gotta figure out what the reliable numbers are. 70, 12, gross profit, uh, okay, 9308. Okay, these numbers don't seem super reliable. Hmm. All right, the thing I'm looking at right now is probably not going to be super easy to read for a lot of you guys, but once I go to my main sheet, I'll it'll be bigger. 29. Okay, this one looks more reliable. Uh, let's see. Cost of revenue 16.6, okay. Gross profit, marketing. Oh, it's cuz of the stock-based compensation. Hmm. Okay. I need to use this information. Okay. Oh yeah, and let me know, do you guys think I should play music while I'm streaming? Because there's a lot of times where I'm going to be kind of silent. I just have to think and stuff. Uh, let me know what you guys think. So, oh yeah, by the way, for color coding, I mentioned this in previous streams, but green is just when you're linking to a different, different, um,
different sheet. Cost of revenue, SPC. Okay, uh, let me, I'll zoom into this part um, so you guys can see what I, what the issue was before. Let's, uh, so you guys say US financial is more easy to understand. Yep, music would be nice. Okay, I'll do that in the next stream. And you guys will probably still hear the clicking through the music. Lo-fi beats to model two. <laughs> No need music, I'm listening to this live while, oh, I see, okay. All right, but anyway, beforehand, the issue was that the numbers were not matching up because there's this thing called SPC, which is stock-based compensation. And that's just like options and things that you give, yeah, it's basically stock options you give to your employees. And it, it's like an expense, but it's a non-cash expense. So for whatever reason, this information that I'm pulling from, they exclude it. Uh, and that's why some of the numbers were a little off. But now that we've solved that issue, we can get the correct, or we can get the numbers without excluding stock-based comp. It should be these numbers for the cogs. Oops. So COGS was 16692, double check that, uh, 16, 1, 2, 2, 8, 1, 2, 8. 16, 6, 9, 2 is what it should be showing. Hmm. Well, I guess it's up here. Oh. It's really confusing. Okay, so this one takes out the cogs. This one, oh, I see. Oh, oops. Okay, so it's just this one. Okay, well that took a while to get to. Uh, actually. Then marketing and sales. Um, I'm gonna look at the chat thing every like, let's say like five few minutes uh, to answer questions. But we're doing was I doing a lot of DCFs at JPM, decent amount, but not as much as probably like the M and A group. Um, you would need to include SPC because it would be cash otherwise. Um, you want to include SPC for the DCF. All right. Marketing and sales. I'm just gonna highlight this, the ones we used. Let's just do this one. Okay. So marketing and sales. So this is the one we want to use, I believe. So I'm 
11, 5, oops, 11, 5, 9, 0. All right, so yeah, it's like a little off because it's off by one because of um, rounding errors, I bet. But looks like we got that correct. RMD. R&D should be 18447 for year 2020. All right, so yep, that's correct. GNA. Six five six five for GNA. Yep. Uh, I don't know why all these are off by one. It's so odd. But most importantly, let's see if we have income from operations three two six seven one. Cool. And then just check another one two three nine eight six. All right, that matches. And then we want to follow this. So let's just look for interest and other income. Instead of having all this stuff, a little too complicated. Let's look what they have in here. Just gonna do a check here. Seven two All right, so this just check is a little off, but it's like off by a, such a small number that it doesn't really matter. And uh, and uh, remember that this DCF is gonna just be a. It's just gonna be a sense check for valuation for Facebook. We're not gonna go super super detailed. like we did for Tesla. Okay. Do I trust Facebook reported numbers? Definitely. How else can you get this data if you don't have visible alpha? You can, um, you can't, it's probably hard to get a lot of the really detailed stuff from all these tabs, but you can get a lot of this information on bamscc.com. You can just download. It's a little more manual, but you pay like 35 bucks a month or something. You can download the data and then, yeah. Okay, interest and income, 509. Let's see if this is here. Okay, cool. Interest and income. Position taxes. Okay, I'm highlighting right now the different lines we're going to be actually using. And then I'm going to double check them and then we should be good. So 509 for interest and other, so 826, 448, 826, 448, that's correct. And then income before provision, 
we can actually calculate this, but 4035, 6327, yep. And then net income, 29, 146, 18, 8, 4, 5. Okay, so cool. So those are our lines. Interest and income. Do we need a percentage? Okay, pretty negligible. Okay, and then percent of EBT. EBT stands for earnings before before taxes. It's EBIT. Hold up, where are our taxes at? Let's see if there's any questions. Seems like there is not very much. So, uh, yeah, I know I'm really silent. I feel bad when I'm just like working and not saying anything. Um, so I guess if you guys have questions, let me know. Okay, this is actually not correct. This is just taxes. Provision benefit from income taxes. I'm pretty sure that's right. So 4,035. Yep. Okay, and net income should be 29,146. Okay, so we're off by one, but not a big deal. Oh, so. to calculate our earnings before taxes. Interest and income. Okay, yeah, so that's our interest and then we need to subtract that. So wait, these are negative. That means it's, for whatever, so they had excess cash, I don't know, that was bearing a lot of interest. So when we were subtracting it out for this interest and income line item, and so this is where they're, maybe they have debt. Uh, actually, I'm not, I'm not sure if Facebook has debt now. I think for a while they did not. Accounts payable, blah, blah, blah. Okay, they don't have debt. So I'm not sure where their interest expense would come from. I, I, it's such a small number, I guess it doesn't really matter. Don't need to stress about that. Okay, yeah, so this is pretty 
unhelpful information actually. Um, but anyway, EBT net income is your EBT minus your taxes. Hmm. Numbers are just something's going something's weird. Oh. Interest and income. Okay, so this is adding. Oh, interesting. So Facebook is earning interest on their cash right now. So cool, we got our uh, income statement. So let's see, check. Um, so yeah, these are gonna be off by a little bit, but the last few years is all we're gonna really be looking at, so it doesn't matter. And all right, keyboard, I bought off coupon and it's just a normal keyboard. Once I, yeah, if I buy like an actual nice keyboard, I'll let you guys know. All right, so have our income statement for Facebook. And let's just look at some of the numbers. I talked about revenue before. The growth is declining, but it's just because Facebook's revenue is just growing so quickly. And so it's harder to have a higher growth rate. And so there's that. And then COGS, pretty steady. Marketing and sales. Also pretty steady. R&D, also pretty steady. GNA, a little bumpy here. And then next few years are gonna also be a little bumpy because of their spend on the metaverse and all that. That'll be like a little challenging to pro project, but we'll do our best. Okay, and then net income. Cool. So a lot of that we just created is actually just gonna be for reference. Um, I'm not really sure even if we're gonna use a lot of this, the income statement stuff at least. Posture. 
All right, so the good thing about having all that information here though, is we can just link to it. That's kind of why we did that. And then for when you're linking to the same sheet, purple is the fonts that we used at JPM. Okay, and then EBIT, you can also link to over here. Taxes, also here. I realized that we're gonna have to Oh, wait, no, just kidding. We don't have to change all this. Well, there's there's just some, some adjustments I'm going to have to make when we actually start projecting. That's what I was starting to talk about, but then I realized. Basically, just never mind. <laughs> all right. Um, Okay, EBIOT, uh, not really super important to calculate this, but we could just do it anyway. All right, DNA. So this we do need to grab from the cash flow statement. Hmm. I'll double check these numbers soon. Uh, plant property and equipment purchases, that's CapEx. Change in networking capital. Calculate it for you here. Their change in working capital is very funky. But let's check the numbers. Um, let's see if there's any questions though. Uh, Tesla is not finished up and it's, uh, I'm gonna have to do it in like one or two weeks. I'll let you guys know. Um, you can follow on Instagram also to get up announcements of whenever I announce the lives, live streams and stuff. Um, when you do financial modeling in JPM with this keyboard, will people get annoyed? Yes, definitely. <laughs> you want a pretty quiet keyboard if you're in the office. <sighs> Just looking at the other questions. Seems like a bunch of uh, question. Which EV EBITDA multiple to use for calculating terminal value? you would look at a multiple based off of what your peers are trading at. On Wolfgang, I, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I, yeah, I would use the current market cap, not the one in the DCF. So that one's a, that's a mistake. Thanks for pointing that out. And uh, yeah, so we started an hour earlier than I thought in Europe because apparently there's daylight saving there or something um i which i didn't know about and cool i did i did answer one of your questions i told you if you're going to be using your ebitda multiples then you look at your peer set even for terminal value OK, 
Okay. Taxes, um, we are just using, we're just looking at historical information for taxes and then we'll, we're gonna create cases for all of this. We're gonna have a base case, optimistic case and conservative case. So we wanna first, whenever you're modeling though, just get all the historicals, uh, historical information first, just so that you can project your numbers out better. Okay, this working capital is going to be an issue later. I can already tell. All right, but let's check some of these numbers. DNA. Let's go to our cash flow statement. Six eight six two five seven four one. So that looks good. And then capex. 15115, 15102, looks good. Changes in assets and liabilities. All right. Oh man, there's a lot of stuff here. Just gonna try calculating one of these. So equals negative 1512 plus 135, minus 34 minus 17 plus 178, minus 1054 plus 108 minus 527. Okay, so that looks right. Cool. So I, oops, I feel pretty good about these numbers. And now, uh, let's see, unlevered free cash flow. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is project out our free cash flow. Um, to answer some questions, so would you consider doing a DCF modeling camp or course? I don't know, I'm kind of busy these days, but I feel like a lot of this stuff I show you guys here though will provide some good info for now. Are you gonna do a DCF on Corsair Gaming? Mm, I don't know about that. How do I get that EV EBITDA multiple appears like in case of Amazon? You look at the enterprise value for each competitor, like Apple or, uh, well, Apple's not really a pure competitor, but you know, one of the big companies, right? Microsoft, you, and then you get their EBITDA multiples, you compare them and you look at either like an average, median, you just look at their peer set and then you figure out a range and you apply that multiple range to um, well, you don't have to apply a range, but you can just choose a number, a multiple from there and apply it to your terminal value or, or and to your EBITDA, your projected EBITDA, and that gets you to your terminal value. And thanks, Nathan. And so the company uses free cash flow to buy in additional inventory and PP&E on the balance sheet. Uh, free cash flow is kind of just a... Yeah, they, you can free cash flow is called free cash flow because you can pretty much use it to buy anything. You don't have to use it for additional inventory or PPE. &E. Like Facebook doesn't even really have inventory, right? But they can use their free cash flow to make an acquisition, um, buy more, spend more on capex, like build a new uh, new office building, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And yeah, exactly what Wolfgang said about using your own intuition. Okay. Now it's time to project. And we'll probably do a 10 year DCF. OK. 
Okay, and this, this will look similar to if you guys joined be in the previous streams. So we're gonna have a conservative case. And then I'm gonna make the street case the base case, and then I have an optimistic case. Probably pull the street case figures. All right, so we're going to use fact set. That's what I used to use at JPM. Oh, wait, I need to set some stuff up first, actually. Do I have to use a new ticker now? Uh, let me make sure I got it right. Uh, okay, we'll see if that works. Currency won't matter. Okay, yeah, so this gets pretty buggy, but we're just going to be pulling Facebook's street projections. Census estimate, oops. So the item is gonna be sales. Get the mean, get annual. Rolling the year will be here. Start date, latest available. Okay, I guess it's still Facebook. Oops. Yep. Could you add to the model that from 2024 they start paying dividends? You could, but I don't think we're going to do that because that's too... I don't know, unless you, there's uh, information that that's what they're going to be doing. Can you show the process of finding EV with the... Uh, perhaps. We'll see how... Well, I'm trying to finish this in the next hour or so. So if we have time. Um, okay, right, but company can use, do you trust projections? How much do you trust them? It's hard to say. That's why uh, it's normally good to build out your own projections like we did for the Tesla one, but it takes a super long time. Okay, let's find our EBIT. how long did we 
half of this. Okay, and these numbers are probably going to be super off because as I had explained in previous streams, when you have uh, projections, the brokers eventually stop projecting some of them. So let's say in 2021, we have like 15 to 20 brokers. Then in 2025, we might have 10 brokers. And so like these numbers are not super, super reliable. Um, but let's take a look at them first. So yeah, this is growing at 37%. I don't know why, how that's possible. Hmm. Facebook. Hmm. That's very aggressive. But everyone is. Oh, did they acquire someone recently? Nope. So we have Facebook going down to 22%. Um, I know there's a lot of supply chain issues and so that's why growth is down, but to grow that much more in the next year is very odd. Mm, and then these figures are also, oh, this is for COGS, so that shouldn't even be here. So these numbers are also very aggressive. 32671, let's see, EBIT, yep. Hmm. Yeah, facts that is around that. Uh, and I I provide some like numbers or trading comp information and stuff for Patreon members. So that's why it's like I don't just pay it out of pocket. Um, eventually the entire community that we've built so far kind of helps in a sense cover for it, but, um, yeah, fax is just very helpful to do, find out some good analysis with, but right now it's a little confusing. So right now, so they're, they're saying 2021, okay. Increase to 40%, which, oh wait, 2021 is not, oh, I'm so stupid. 2021 has almost already finished. So that's not even a projection. So this, that number is probably pretty accurate. I would say that Facebook has just been crushing it lately then. Revenue, all right, so let's see what this is. Okay, so they're already at 84 from the past three quarters. So that's why it's so high. They just really grew really quickly this year. So that looks right. Oh, that's very interesting. Facebook's gonna grow at 37%. I guess they decreased last year because of COVID and then they're kind of slowing down a little bit. But yeah, this, I guess this looks fine. And then for this as well, it should be pretty accurate because EBIT, um, like I said, it's 
off 2021. And so let's take a look at, what should we look at? The same thing before. Income from operations. Yeah. So it's already at 34 ish. Let's check the other one. Okay, so let's copy these numbers. All right, so cool, this looks correct. I was just checking that. And then right now in the per first three quarters of 2021, Facebook has generated 34 billion in EBIT. And so in the last, in the next quarter, they just need to generate 13 billion more. And that's just like 2 billion more than their, uh, their average in the past few quarters. But hol uh, holiday season's coming up. So I would assume quarter four is the largest um, quarter. Okay, so these numbers look pretty good then, generally. Like it's a little weird that it's going down and back up and let's see if how much, let's see how many brokers are projecting. Um, okay, after 2023, it gets a little unreliable. Actually, very unreliable. So yeah, 2026, we have four brokers. 2025, we have six. 2024, we have nine. 2023, we have 34. Okay, so this is pretty much the last year where it's pretty reliable. 2023. All right, so this is a point where it's a little unreliable. How do I mark that? Just highlight it. Okay. Uh, so I forgot to ask answer some of these questions. I'm just I can't. I'm not going to scroll all the way. I'm going to just look at ones that are here. Can you use Kager for projecting revenues? Mm, yeah. Modeling Facebook isn't even necessary. Yeah, I mean it is. I think it's a buy. That's why I made a video about it, and then I am doing a model now instead of doing a model first um but you know i think it's also helpful to know like okay what is the fair price for facebook though based on your valuation right i think that's still a helpful analysis uh, i learned excel at jpm and then i yeah i don't really learn excel at all at school actually so i don't really think school is that helpful for excel now that I left IB, this is what I do for a living. <laughs> I'm a, I do YouTube for a living or rare liquid. All right, so let's see. What do I want to do here? Street case. Um, okay, we're all good. I'm gonna get the growth rate. So it was reliable for these three years. And then these next ones get a little bit weird. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Um, 
So if I were going to do this model really, really properly, I'd want to add something about like the metaverse and stuff later. Right now, we're just going to focus on the revenue figures that we have here. This is not super detailed, like I mentioned. Um, this is basically just forecasting Oculus sales plus advertising revenue. And then who knows what will happen with metaverse stuff. Uh, I think we can add just, I'll slap that on a little bit later. But for now, we're just going to want to, I think, gr grow this down to a certain percentage. And so let's think in 2030, what, gr what growth rate do we think Facebook will be growing at? And I'll show you guys the thing I sent to my patron members. I showed this before in a previous stream. But this is just information about what companies trade at and stuff. And anyway, the important thing though is I wanted to look at Apple is going at 5%, largest company, one of the largest, second largest company in the world. Microsoft's going at 19, 14%, which is crazy. Alphabet, 15. Okay, so even these companies that are much older than Facebook are still growing in the double digits. So for Facebook, I think it's fine if they're still growing at something like 7% in the last year. I think that's relatively conservative, maybe make it 8% and then we'll have it more, be more conservative later. Um, but first, let me just, so basically what I'm gonna do, since t these are our most reliable figures, I'm going to grow this down to 8%. Yeah. I want to do this and I want to do this where it's growing down not linearly but exponentially ish. So I have to remember how I did that last time though. Um I'm going to I'm going to cheat and go to the Tesla one. Okay, so I did that times 1 plus that. Then this is Oh. Oh, I see. That's why we did that. Okay, we're just going to grow this down linearly then. It's different, a little bit of a different process. Uh, Where should I build the assumptions? Let's see. Should we call this is the optimistic case the Zuck case? So this, our 2023, or 2030 revenue target.
Oops. Uh, I always have issues with freezing these panes. Oh, I should do it here. Um, All right, so to answer some questions, becoming Patreon member, getting these templates and data, you would get the financial database data with the multiples, but the, and then for the models themselves, it's for the highest paying tier. And when is a good time to assume linearly declining growth rate? Ideally, it's not linear. I guess I could try to make it not linear, but um, if your company has really steady cash flow, or steady growth and everything is just very sta um, stable, then growing linearly is totally fine. Revenue breakdowns, you kind of have to dig for them, but they're not as detailed as I think a lot of what I showed today. <sighs> Tetris, I used to love playing Tetris, but I never got like crazy, crazy good at it. Proving Excel speed, you just gotta practice. You just gotta, I don't know what else um, you would expect really, right? Cause, uh, um, yeah, I mean, just start building your own model and then you'll get better. And if you have any, if you ever wanna know what to, uh, or if, you, if you're ever not sure what shortcut something is, then you just Google it and then everything is online. Okay, so let me think about how I could potentially grow this down, not linearly. I have to do some math, which I totally forgot. Uh, okay, so Kager, how do I reverse the Kager? Normally it's x equals x equals, okay, actually, we can just look up the Kager formula. Well, I guess we have to know how much we want to grow or decrease by each year. So, hmm, and this, well, let's first see what the linear looks like, because if it looks fine, then we may not even need to worry about this so much. So we're doing the total difference divided by the number of years. Oh, posture. So that divided by a number of years, that's wrong. Hmm. Oops. Oh, oops. Okay, so then we're going basically 19, 18, 16, 15, 14, 12, 11, 9, 8. That doesn't, that doesn't seem too bad. I don't feel like decreasing by a certain cake or anything is going to make it that much worse or better. And I would say that these figures are 
let's see, is it conservative or optimistic? So in comparison, the street has these figures. So it looks a little optimistic. Maybe if we make this 7%, it's closer to the street. But given that Facebook here grew at 37%, I guess what the street might be thinking is that with the privacy changes and more potential issues, yeah, with privacy changes, current supply chain issues, maybe the growth is going to slow, but I think this is pretty in line with street. Like I wouldn't, I think the reason that these figures are decreasing a lot over these next few years is just because like I showed you guys before, there are less brokers. So it's the numbers are a little unreliable. I think this is pretty fair for Facebook. So let's go with that for the street case. And then we got to make our switch. And now the question is about conservative case, but I think what we can just do is grow it down to, oh, oops. So this should be, our conservative case will grow it down to, let's say, uh, what would be super conservative? I think super conservative would be 3%. And that'd be like, Facebook is pretty much dead as a company. And then optimistic, given that a lot of the previous companies we looked at in the Excel sheet I showed you about the comparable companies, they're like Microsoft is still growing in double digits, Amazon, etc. I think super like a super Zuck case type scenario. I think eleven percent would be. Let's let's make it. We will see if it's too aggressive later, or if it's not aggressive enough. But I think ten percent makes more. Actually, okay, sorry, <laughs> keep changing my mind. Um, since this is we're decreasing that by four percent, let's just increase this one by four percent too. And we'll change it later if needed. Oh, okay, so what will be different here is that for this we're using, for these that we're using our street cases, which uh, cl cl clearly has a pretty big decline, right? And then it just kind of holds steady. For our optimistic case, I think we're gonna keep it steady throughout the whole all the all the years so that's going to be a little different and mm, this is pretty aggressive i don't know about this actually this is very very aggressive yeah, I don't think they can grow by 34% after in 2022. So we wanted to just be a little bit more aggressive than the street, but how do I make this? Hmm. Supply chain affects Facebook because a lot of people, a lot of the way Facebook makes money is 
through advertising revenue. And so it's pretty much all e-commerce. Um, and so that's how supply chain face, uh, affects Facebook. I mean, I'm really tempted to make this something like 5%, oops. I just don't wanna make, I don't wanna hard code it like that though. I'm trying to see. what I should do here. Yeah, because I want this to be around 25. Okay, I guess I'll just have to make the assumption here. So 2022 revenue. Um, And we're not going to have one for the street case. All right, so since we're at 37%, Facebook for the past few years going 37, 27, 22, then went up to 37%. I'd say if it were to go back down to around 25%, that would be, that would be pretty optimistic, but not unrealistic in my opinion. Like it's, it's in, it's in the realm of possibility, but it's still challenging for Facebook to do that. So then we're like 6% higher here, 5% higher here, 6%. So basically like 5% higher in each of the cases until we get to the latter years where it's really drops down actually. Um, this is our super optimistic case though. Yeah, and I'm spending a lot of time on this because this is a, probably like one of the most important parts Everything else is gonna be pretty easy. Um, but here let's put, okay, let's, so Facebook will have to kind of really fall off. Um, and well, 2022 actually should be relatively, it should not change that much from the street. So let's pay, let's put like, fifth, no. 7, 16%. Okay, so decreased by 3% and 4% 4 this conservative case is like super conservative um do gigabyte members have access to these models no it's for the um terabyte it's for the highest tier um just trying to think if these numbers are too crazy see if 10% well let's just for now calculate things out all right so 2021 Facebook grows by 37% then in a conservative case, they drop to 16%, which is super conservative from this drop. 19% is what Street thinks. 25% is our optimistic case, which is possible. 2020 grew by 22%. So 
So that's probably a little too high. So let's make this 24%. Oops. And again, I just want to stress that this is us for for us to get a range and in like a super detailed model like we did with Tesla, we would want to have like a revenue build and be able to more accurately predict everything. But I want to finish this stream uh, when we, and get to a share price uh, because we didn't do that with Tesla yet. So I'm taking, I'm making this a lot more of a simpler analysis. Mm, 16, 19, 24, 14, 18, 22. 24%, 22%, 21%. So this would be pretty, pretty aggressive. Yeah, so let's That would mean Facebook right now is at $117 billion in revenue. And then in their in 2030, they'd, they'd be at 480 billion. Which kind of seems too crazy to me, but let's see Apple 2021 revenue. Apple's revenue was 94, 95 billion. Microsoft was 168 billion. I don't know if that's their full year. All right, total revenue for Microsoft about 170 billion. So those numbers are probably just like way too high. I think I'm gonna have to scale these down because I don't really, yeah, Facebook could, you know, create the metaverse and all that and it could get pretty big, but I don't really see them growing to, wait, let's see. Right now, oh, actually right now, Facebook is pretty up there. Oh. Hmm. Twenty twenty two revenue growth switched between Zuck and conservative. Oh yes. Good call. Thank you. <laughs> Wait. Oh yeah, it is. This should be equal to that. And this should be equal to that. Thanks, Marcus. Yeah, it's gonna be um, posted on the channel later. To zoom out a little bit. Okay, so in our conservative case, Facebook grows into $260 billion in revenue. In our base case, three hundred fifty-five billion. Hmm. I guess the thing is that to grow at twenty-four percent, that might be a little bit too high, given that over the past few years they grew at this rate. I mean, it's not gonna make a huge difference. And I need to build out the rest of the model, but let's keep that at 8%, 5%, 3%. 8. Okay, I think this makes a little more sense. All right, we're gonna run with that. 
for now. Street case. Considering new upcoming social media platforms along with metaverse with the meta use of metaverse and upcoming social pl media platforms revenue shouldn't be that high uh-huh seems like we have different views of fa facebook's nightmare scenario yeah we can change them we can change them a bit later but the reason that i was looking or i think this conservative case does make sense to be conservative is that uh, Microsoft, I, th I think I showed you guys, but Microsoft is already is, is, is a lot older of a company. It's growing much more quickly, but I guess, you know, they, I don't really know what their history is. It might've declined or, and whatnot, but let's see. So in their conservative case, Facebook pretty much doubles their revenue in 10 years. And I think that's fair. Okay, I'm gonna worry about this stuff later. Um, let's build out the rest of the stuff first. Okay, so and then these numbers are pretty stable. So let's see what the average over the, over the past few years. Thirty-seven percent. So Facebook margin is gonna decline once because they're gonna start building the metaverse and whatnot, and then I guess. Uh, I would assume that over time their margins really depends on a lot of things but should kind of improve and um, okay but for this we'll assume their margin decrease for conservative we'll assume their margin decreases a little bit so 2022 EBIT margin so i'm not going to make it too different than the street because it's just one year into the future hmm, actually now that i think about it next year's projection shouldn't be too far off the street is usually a pretty accurate by one year so actually i'm sorry to do this but i think it'll be more accurate to do this um well okay instead of growing it by so much it should it should just be a little bit less than what the street thinks or a little more i think that would make mo much more sense since we're building off of the street assumptions and then um, for this one as well, one year out, it shouldn't be too far off. But you know, the street is wrong pretty often. I don't know if they would have assumed that Facebook was gonna grow at 37% in 2021. That's kind of why I had this like super aggressive assumption. Um, so like 21%, 17%, I think that's fine. That kind of captures more of probably what's gonna happen. Uh, yeah, okay, so and then 2023, where the difference, I guess I wanna make this different just by 2%. So this will be equals that minus 2%. And then this will be that plus 2%. Okay, so and then this one, we want something similar. I don't really know if this is the best way to model this, model this out. I just like having my assumptions all up here so that I can just change them. I mean, you can also just 
make change the assumptions down where you're actually where you, where you uh, are modeling but I think this is a little bit better okay and then this so this one will also be similar where it's that oops 2023 revenue growth we're gonna have it be that for the conservative case um, minus 2% again and then this one here greater than two per or plus two percent okay and yeah that makes me feel a little better actually because these are the reliable three uh, years of projection so we got that and then now we gotta fix this How long has the stream been going on? Eleven seventeen. What time is it? Three seventeen. What time did I start? Start at one. Okay, two hours. Oh, I don't want this to get too long again. So I'm gonna try to speed through the rest of this. So again, this shouldn't be too far off from street. So I'm gonna just decrease. Whoa. I'm gonna decrease that by 1%. Oops. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. And usually margins are a little bit easier to predict than revenue growth. That's why I'm making it the, the difference of just 1%. The keyboard to decrease decimal is control, control period or control comma. Okay, and then the street, at least. So Facebook is making a lot of investments into the metaverse and technically should grow back to a higher percentage depending on their investments. So let's see. I think we'll do something similar again with our revenue. So let's see, we had Facebook at a few years ago, like 35, 45, 50, 45, 34, 38. Sounds like a really good, pretty average slash still pretty good year for Facebook's around 45, 40%. 40%. 
they're decreasing because of their investments in hiring and all that, which should slow down a little bit. And then just fix these formulas first. Okay, so let's say in our conservative case, it grows to, or let's see, 34, 35, maybe it just stays pretty flat and then goes down to 34%. That pretty much assumes Facebook doesn't get any more efficient over time. And then for our optimistic case, it's a 36, or street case, I think get it to around 38% and then optimistic. I'd say getting growing to 40% is actually a little conservative. Hmm. Looking at, well, with a lot more investment, um, maybe let's look at 42%. So 34%, 38%, 42%. Am I using a trackpad or a mouse? Um, sometimes I use a mouse. I am gonna post this live. Uh, thank you for, thank you, Justin. And don't you think it should decrease a little more with new projects? Well, that's the thing is that even with these past few years here, Facebook had always been investing in new projects, but and hiring aggressively and all that, right? But eventually companies should become more efficient over time. And so that's why in our conservative case, like the street, for example, like I showed you earlier, here, the street, well, these numbers are not super, super reliable, but Still, it's pointing upwards, right? It's it's just, they're assuming that Facebook is going to become more and more efficient over time, and that's generally the case. For Facebook, um, well, okay. So if if they start selling a lot of hardware, then it's possible that they become a lot less efficient. But if they focus still on like let's say selling digital goods and ads in the metaverse, which will require very very little it's very scalable, right? And you don't, it doesn't require a lot of, um, a lot of costs, I guess. Uh, well, how do I say this? Like right now with Facebook's business model, when they, when they focus on advertising, they, uh, have a very efficient capital efficient business, right? That's where their margins are so high because it's just technology. You don't need to hire another person necessarily to, keep scaling it doesn't matter how many employees for example um versus something that's more like hardware where there are a lot of costs and that's a lower margin business you need to increase tap capex by a lot capex is we didn't pr uh, project capex yet okay so let's calculate this Okay, so let's take another look at this. 40% growing down, and then conservative case stays flat. Optimistic case builds up a little bit, and then, or street case, and then optimistic case builds up to 42%, which is pretty aggressive. Hmm. Hmm. 
Uh, the 10 billion that they're investing, the employees and all that, that is captured here. They're, if they weren't investing in all that, so CapEx is different. I'm not talking about CapEx. I'm just talking about their employees that they're hiring and all that. With their revenue increase and all, like you can see that their EBIT is staying flat, right? But normally this should be like 14%. So that's like an $8 billion difference, right? Um, normally if they weren't doing all that hiring in 2022 and 2023, then their e margins would be a lot higher. So 38% there, 34%. 42% is that. I'm going to make the optimistic case 40% because 42% just feels a little too high. Okay. Taxes. This one should be easier. I wouldn't use a detailed operational expense projection and plug just margins instead because we're trying to make a we're trying to do a quick DCF we're not trying to do a super long one this would take forever um, yeah, and this DCF is more for a overall a rough estimate it's not for like it's not a super super detailed one If you want to make a super, super detailed one, be my guest and do a live stream and I'll, I'll watch it. All right. Uh, so past few years, so tax rates are always a little different for companies because they can just do some weird things in order to lower their taxes. Um, Right now, I think this tax rate is supposed to be at like around 21%. And I guess things just depend on if tax laws change. But um, Okay, it's still at tw uh, 21%. Okay, I'm just gonna, well, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, let's just call it 21%. Oops. Then conservative case, let's say the tax rate goes up to historically, what was it before, like 35? Corporate tax rate in 2015. Do 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 do. Why isn't this easy to find? Okay, whatever. I'm going to make this 30%. Who knows what laws will change? I think 21% is already pretty low. I don't really, I don't really think it's gonna get a lot lower. So let's say this is like uh, 19%. And we're gonna have switches so that we can use whatever we think is fair. And in our case, I'm just gonna stick with this 21%. But we're just gonna build out functionality. And this will probably be 21% for at least this year. 
and probably next year. I don't remember what when the election year is. 2024. 2024. Okay. And then so we're going to assume in 20, so for the next few years, it's just going to stay the same. Maybe if we get a new president, it'll increase. All right, we're almost there. DNA, we're gonna make this super easy. We're not gonna, all right, let's look at the percentages first. So CapEx, um, well, actually, let me pull up the street estimates. They will have done a lot of work on this. Nineteen billion in twenty, then twenty eight billion in twenty eight billion in twenty twenty two, thirty billion. Okay, there's some that have not been updated recently. So it should be around thirty something billion in twenty twenty two and thirty twenty three billion or thirty billion again in twenty twenty three. That's too low. Okay, um, I guess we might have to build cases again. Or let's just do this. Most comp companies have pretty complicated structures, so in order to avoid taxes, so isn't the real percentage of taxes that pay they pay way lower than twenty one percent? Yes, it's just simplifying assumption we made. As you can see, like thirteen percent, twenty six percent, twelve percent, twenty one percent. It's just a simplifying assumption, and if we want to be more conservative, we can use like this optimistic case scenario. Um, I mean, I guess what we could also do is do an average. Now that you bring it up over the past few years, 
and then 30% would probably be pretty aggressive. Optimistic case. Let's say it's at fifteen percent on average. It's pretty optimistic. Let's use the last five years. Nineteen percent. Um, and it stays around nineteen percent. Okay. And then it goes to 30%, which is pretty high, but back when tax rates were higher, they were, Facebook was paying a pretty good amount. So I think 30% is fine there. 15% would be pretty good for Facebook, so that's pretty optimistic. How do you find brokers outlooks without FactSet? You pretty much can't. Uh, you have to use other figures. Uh, sorry, other sources. <laughs> I just totally blanked out there. Uh, uh, do you think there was too much leverage in the stock market and will it crash? Uh, man, I wish I knew. I, I mean, everyone thinks there's going to be a crash eventually, right? But it's really hard to know when. Oh, I, already, I already did this work. So DNA is, oops. Dang, I was hoping this stream was gonna be like two hours and it's definitely a lot more again. Sorry. Oh, it's so buggy. Depreciation and amortization. Okay. Actually, that's not even the important thing. The important thing is CapEx. Capital expenditures. Oh, wow, Richie, I'm surprised you're still in the stream. Okay, 19 billion to 28 billion, which is what we saw earlier. And 2023 is our last reliable figure. But we can have them for reference actually. I'm surprised we still have 120 of you guys still here. I'm very surprised. Thank you all for. I don't know how many of you were here since the beginning, but I'm so surprised that there's that many people who want to watch Excel modeling. <laughs> uh, like when I first started, the first stream I did was Netflix, and I thought I literally thought there'd be like 10 to 20 people max.
Okay, let's see. <laughs> um, fact set is, yeah, it's around 1000 to 1500 a month. And they change their prices all the time. So yeah, that's why. And then why did I quit JPM? It's kind of a long story. And oh, I'm surprised you watched all of the Tesla stream. I'll try to finish that soon. And which study? Study business. All right. And let's see here. Okay. So we're almost there. I just need to project out these last few things. So for our DNA, these these assumptions, like the cash flow ones, they tend to be pretty, um, what's the word, pretty, not unimportant, but much more based on historicals. I think that's the best way to put it. And like you see here, right? It's 9%, 13%, like there was like a big increase, decrease. And I actually do think that this should increase as well because CapEx is increasing and these two are so related. So I actually do think that we want this to be around, let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure why CapEx is so much higher and depreciation is not really going up. It should be. Let's take a look at, oh, it's, Thirty one percent, thirty eight percent, forty five, forty three, thirty eight, thirty five, forty five. Okay, I think that's yeah, we should actually look at the percent of capex, not the percentage of sales, because sales is increasing quite a bit. Okay, let's do our capex first. So with building the metaverse in these years. I need to move this thing. All right, guys, I have to zoom out a little. There's too much stuff we built up here. All right, so DNA percent of CapEx. Let's have this be an average of the past three years. And that looks pretty similar to what has been happening. Normally, actually though, oops, it should be up here. CapEx, should, your DNA should be like 80% of your CapEx. So, ah, uh, this is odd. I mean, so yeah, this is more normal where it's like 77%. Might have to ramp this up actually. Are my models better than Professor Damodoran's? Um, I have no idea. Uh, hi, sorry, is it not really? Why do you use EBIT and not EBITDA? E oh, this is for calculating your free cash flow. That's what you have to do. Use EBIT. Earnings before interest after taxes. Because the cash free cash flow formula equals EBIT times one minus your tax rate. And then plus DNA. Minus capex, minus change in networking capital. 
So, and your DNA should change or should be close to your capex because basically your capex is your money you spent on things like factories, plant property equipment, all that stuff. And it depreciates over time. And as it depreciates, it should be close to, it eventually gets to your capex figure. And so this is pre 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 this is not a good assumption. We got to make this grow up to something like, let's see, the largest it ever was for Facebook was 77%. So, I mean, let's say this grows up to 75%. I'm going to skip a step a little, or I'm going to, I'm going to just do this. Okay, and capex, so we can't really take an average because they're gonna be, they said they would spend like 10 billion more, right? So that's why this grows from 19 billion to 28 billion in 2022. And then it kind of stays steady for the following year. And the street says it should be like that. It says it should be like that. Mm, the street's a lot higher, actually. What do we use percentage of why? <clears throat> I been this is a burning question. When do we use percentage of capex and when do you use percentage of sales to project DNA? Normally, you actually just look at both and then see what is more reliable and like is more easy to make projections for. Do I use this DCF model each quarter? I would update it if I was like super. If I wanted to, I guess. Um, okay, 13 billion for 2023 and then 16 in 2024. Okay, this is too high. This is Guggenheim, Cowan. So it looks like it should be around 15 billion in 2024 while we get twelve billion, which is way too low. And these are really low, so it's just hard to project this. Mm, okay, we're gonna just we're gonna rely on the street. My projections are just, they're too low. And your cash flow figures typically are not gonna really affect your analysis too, too much. And so that's why I'm okay with them as well. I okay with doing this as well. Cowan says they're going to be at depreciation of 22 billion, 29 billion, 17 billion. $13 
30 billion. Okay. Yeah, I think historically, so these numbers are not the most reliable. I probably want to have better numbers if I was going to do this more. Uh, more reliably, I guess, but it'll, it'll do for now. We have to get to our price. Okay, so let's say this gets to the highest it's ever gotten, 77%. CapEx, we are going to make an average over the past few years here. Hmm, but this doesn't change with our cases, so that's not good actually. Hmm. Oh, I see a bunch of questions on here. So I wonder why there are two options using uh, the pros and cons of using percent. What's the pros and cons of using percent capex? So normally the good thing is that your percentage, your depreciation should never really go higher than your CapEx. So if it's a really easy to analyze company, it should just stay at around 80% of CapEx the whole time. Um, percentage of revenue, things could just be a little weird sometimes. You might have a really big DNA year for whatever reason. Um, but I see you guys are kind of answering each other's questions. DCF for Tesla is only available for Patreon members. Okay, so I actually need to make this a little bit. Oh. Ah, okay, this is what we can do. All right, it's a little messy. Okay, so these should be Okay, I'm taking a huge shortcut here because it's not going to affect our analysis too much and I want to move on to calculating our actual price per share and such. But this should make everything dynamic, hopefully.
Cool. Okay, now everything's dynamic. Except this year. Oh, that's because our revenue is not changing. Okay. All right. And then now our change in networking capital. This looks also super weird. Percent change in sales is not that reliable. Looks like our percentage of sales is more reliable. Okay, um, well, see what this looks like so a lot of tech companies have negative working capital because well let's see what Facebook has actually should you buy more Solana I think if you have a long-term time horizon and don't mind the volatility, yes. Okay, so their account receivable, what's causing it to be so negative? Prepaid expenses, accounts receivable, other assets. Okay, so a lot of tech companies they, well, there's no deferred revenue here, but it looks like Facebook's able to have, get, get, uh, have really good terms with their, I don't know if they have suppliers or anything, but essentially they have a model where they're able to get cash first and then pay it off later. So, I mean, Okay, so it's not a huge part of the analysis. So we're just gonna roll with this and then let's figure out our unlevered free cash flow. So EBOT plus your DNA minus your CapEx minus your change in networking capital gets us to our free cash flow. And then we need to get our terminal value, oops. Well, actually, the present value of the cash flow. Need our whack and our yeah. So whack terminal growth rate. Let's make it nine percent. Facebook for street case, Zuck case. Um, wait. Let's 
Terminal growth rate. So it's growing by 5% here. 4%. Let's read case. Okay, I'm gonna change that later probably. Um, and then We're using choose formula. Uh, we're using choose formula here instead of offset because it allows you to select each specific cell. All right, and then it's one little trick here. You can actually call this a uh, actual name. So to discount back to present value, you get your free cash flow and divide by one plus your whack and then power to the year that you're in. Year number of projected years. It's actually also something called Mid count, uh, mid, mid year discounting. Um, but I don't think I want to build that out today because we're running out of time. Terminal value is your last free cash flow year. Your last, last year's free cash flow times one plus your terminal growth rate divided by your WAC minus your terminal growth rate. Terminal growth rate should be risk-free rate. Terminal growth rate of 46% makes zero sense. Company, um, so you can actually use a pretty big terminal growth rate for companies that are still growing. Um, for instance, like Apple, Microsoft, or like I showed you, Microsoft's still growing by double digits. Um, but anyway. Like I've seen, uh, I've seen equity research reports used. I should probably show you right now. Oh, what is that? Okay. Uh, I don't know which one has it. Oh, it's all in Korean. Okay, if I can't find it, you guys, you guys are gonna have to take my word for it. I don't think it's the JPM one. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, let's see. 
Okay. Running out of energy, to be honest. <laughs> All right, we're almost done. And I'll fix some stuff a little bit later. So, okay, so we have terminal value, gotta discount this to one, one plus your whack to the power of the year that you're in. Okay, so we got, yeah, I think we have everything. So then now we need our enterprise value. It's actually a lot less than I thought was gonna, it was gonna be. Okay, and then debt, cash, equity value, shares, share price. Okay, we're gonna find Facebook's debt and cash. Cash, 14 billion plus marketable securities. Marketable securities are just what it sounds like. It's on the market and they're a security that you can sell, so it's pretty much cash. And Facebook has zero debt, so that's zero. So that's pretty much don't even really need those numbers. Not gonna really change anything. So enterprise value minus your debt plus your cash gets you to your equity value. Fully diluted share count. Normally I would have to calculate this, but I'm just gonna cheat a little bit and use tax debt. Fully diluted shares, where are you? Okay. I'm just gonna actually grab it from here. Shares, shares. FD stands for uh, fully diluted, so 2891. So this isn't the final thing, but our final valuation. All right, you guys ready to see the share count? Um, no, I didn't say I would use EV but instead of perpetuity. I, I almost always use the perpetuity growth rate actually. And uh, what would we normally find fully deleted shares? You can find the common shares very easily. Common shares are up here. Here. And then you have to calculate the diluted share count, which I just got from Faxit. 
All right, anyway, so equity value divided by share price. So that's based on our uh, base case, which is actually not that different than what Facebook's trading at right now, to be honest, expecting it to be higher. But um, the assumptions, like I have to change a few things, but if we make things into a more of our optimistic case, then Facebook's share price is like crazy high, 1,100. Things are probably too way too aggressive there. And then for our revenue growth, or sorry, for our conservative case, we have 166. Um, this also doesn't really, what I would also probably do is add terminal value for the metaverse thing. So let's say, let's say in, so right now Instagram is worth a few hundred billion if let's say for example let's say metaverse metaverse valuation um, present value cash is off by a thousand is that right yeah, you're right. Thank you. Wait. Do they have 50, 58? Oh yeah, yep, you're right. Thank you, thank you. Which actually does impact our numbers quite a bit. Okay, so metaverse valuation uh, let's say so for Instagram right now is a hundred or a few hundred billion dollar asset and We could assume that in 2030 Facebook makes The whole metaverse thing. I mean part of this is probably also included in the revenue growth So we would probably want it to make it a little bit um, I want to change it a little bit, but what we would want to do for example is if that in 2030 could be worth something like at least 250 billion, then that's the value there. And then present value of that. Oops. Add 105 basically. So that's like roughly. So basically, all we did here was like, hey, let's say in, by 2030, Facebook's able to make the whole metaverse part, part of their valuation or their company worth 250 billion, which I think is a little conservative. But a lot of that is also captured in this revenue here ish. Although most of this revenue is focused on advertising. Um, why don't I use the NPV formula? I don't, if you if they can only grow by 55% in 2030, you think they'll still spend 45 billion on CampX? It's a good question. That's why we have all these, uh, well, let's see. So if they're growing by a little bit, Taxes there, 40 billion. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I could build out more cases here. I think what's best to just look at right now though is just the street case, which is probably our most reliable case right now. And that has Facebook at about a trillion, 1.3, two trillion in equity value so there's a lot i would need to fix in this model uh and i don't think i'm gonna actually go through all of fixing everything maybe in like a, the next quarter that facebook um facebook is able to report i'll do like an update on this whole valuation and maybe fix a few things get to like a more accurate 
figure um, because yeah it's already been how long has it been three ish hours I don't make this like too much longer so but I think let's see I would say if, if I were gonna change this a little bit what would I think Facebook's f value is based on the assumptions that I feel comfortable with so right now we're at everything on the street base case I think this is relatively conservative. Go by 5%. So, oh my, but this changes everything. Yeah, if they, so $504. I think Facebook, given its long history of doing super well here, can potentially hit this optimistic case. So if you're kind of a believer in Facebook, I would basically, so, okay, yeah, so we got that. And then I'm okay with keeping our operating margins pretty steady, not really being too aggressive with it. Taxes, I wanna keep at just 19% for now. CapEx, okay, this is pretty crazy. This is actually probably why the share price is actually a little less than I thought it was going to be. I think this should actually be lower. 60 billion is just a lot. Um, but anyhow, so I think if, if I were to look at Facebook's share price right now or over the next few years, what I think it should be worth, it's probably around 400 to 500 is where I could see it getting to. So then if, if this is just, so yeah, 413 to 504. Um, WAC 10%, 9%, terminal growth rate 4%. So WAC of 9% is a little bit low, but then uh, Facebook is such a solid business with really strong margins. Um, you could argue, sure, WAC 10%. You could argue, let's use a lower terminal growth rate that really decreases Facebook's share price to 314. I think this is as conservative as I would get for Facebook, um, which is our street case for revenue growth, just normal flat kind of EBIT margins, normal tax rates, uh, low WAC and terminal growth rate, and that gets us to a share price of 314. And Facebook's right now at um, a little higher than that, 323. But I think the upside is up to like 504. So um, that's where I think Facebook over these next few years based on their analysis so far, like I could see it around this range. And of course it really depends on how Facebook performs over the next few quarters. But yeah, that there's like stuff I would need, need to fix. Um, terminal growth rate of four to 6%, it's, uh, for, for companies that keep growing into the future that is beyond your projected year of 2030, your terminal growth rate can be larger than probably what you've learned of always keeping it at two to 3%. Um, yeah, and it's, it's like that in some equity research reports I've seen too. So it's probably just a little bit different from what you might've learned. Um, okay. Cool. So yeah, that concludes the stream. I will, like I said, in the next time Facebook update uh, has an earnings report, maybe I'll do another live stream, make everything a little bit more accurate or detailed. And yeah, so um, if you guys are still here, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer random questions, uh, which I like to do at the end of streams. And uh, if you want to get access to this model, then which a lot of people have asked, um, you can just feel free to join as a Patreon member, which is down in the link below. Um, there's also like some related videos about what a DCF is and uh, whatchamacallit, Patreon link and all that stuff. Um, all right. So if you can share, how much does access to the Excel plugin you're using with all the data and consensus estimates? So each plugin, I use two plugins here and it's around a thousand per month each. 
Learns a lot buying Facebook, haha. <laughs> yeah, 2% two, two terminal growth rate for a tech company. Yeah, it's it's you want to use a 2% to maybe 2.5% terminal growth rate for a really well-established company like Intel or something. Um, but they might not even be growing at 2.5% in their, in their last projected year. Um, it makes no sense. They'll take over the economy at that growth rate. Yes, but you got to remember that in your last projected years, you're discounting so much into the future that even if your growth, your terminal growth rate is a lot, a little bit higher than the economy, you're not actually going to increase your enterprise value as much as you, you you're probably thinking right now. So, like I, as you can see here, these numbers, even though these numbers are getting really massive, your actual free free cash flow value is not really increasing by that much. So. Um, and that's why I've seen even for like Tesla equity research analysts who probably know this stuff better than me. They use like a much higher term, terminal growth rate than 3%. They use like 7%. Um, don't you include a minority discount for quoted shares? I'm not sure what that means. Do you, do you, will, value, will, you value, will I value some banks? I don't know about that. You make the same models in JPM. How detailed were they? So this one I would say is like a pretty basic DCF. And the more detailed ones would probably be similar to the Tesla one that I streamed a few days ago. How trusty is a DCF model? Do you do other types? So I'd say DCF is just a gut check. And I think when you're a retail investor, you don't want to spend, unless you have a lot of free time, you don't want to spend like hours and hours and hours all day just only focus on valuation because there's a lot of qualitative aspects to companies that are also very important and can't be captured in your numbers. Uh, plugins are fact set and vis visible alpha. The TGR is not sector specific. It can't be higher than inflation, real growth rate in the economy. It, if, if it is higher, then you're saying that Facebook will take over the entire world. Um, I think we can agree to disagree. Uh, I know what you guys are saying. Um, but maybe I'll look into it some more. You know, maybe I'm wrong. And because I know exactly what you're talking about. I used to only think that terminal growth rates can only be 2 to 3% max. Uh, but I've seen in equity research reports that that's not how they do it. So um, at the very least, like right now, what I'm assuming is... 3% terminal growth rate, which I think is pretty close to, you know, US economies right, around like 2%. So with that right now, that's why we have to switch here and why, why everything's, uh, what should we call it? Everything's flexible. Um, feels like you have just playing with the growth rates to arrive at the share price you initially had in mind. Not really actually, because I didn't, I did, I built everything out first and then I changed these, right? So it's it's not like I got to a number, I'm like, oh, this is too low. I'm gonna change these, right? I, I spent the bulk of this entire stream on these figures and then I didn't change anything after I changed the cases. But I mean, the model, like honestly, I can change it if I want to. That's the whole point of the model, right? You build everything out and then you, change it if you feel like it should be changed right and there's probably a lot of stuff here that i do need to change and i'd love to see anyone else who feels like there should be a lot changed to this model to stream yourself and then show everyone how you would do it um terminal growth rate has a huge impact on value yep i agree i have a case study interview Coming up, do you think this model would suffice with these type of one hour case study? Um, per, wait, do I have a case study interview coming up? Do you think this model would suffice? So to study this, uh, I don't, it really depends on what kind of interview it is. Um, did I make this by yourself? Yep, if you watch the stream, it's, we started from a blank sheet. Best site for free 10Ks is bamsec.com. 
Um, have I worked in M&A? I didn't work in the M&A group, but I worked in the healthcare group, which worked on M&A deals, which is where I learned about the DCF stuff. Equity research reports are wrong then. Can't grow terminally at over 6% when risk-free rate is under 2%. Um, so yeah, we didn't use the 6%. I just kind of hard-coded that in there. If, if your last projected year is at 8% and then you suddenly decrease it by 2%, that is also pretty inaccurate. So I guess, I guess like a good middle ground would be to, um, I don't know if you want to keep projecting years out, but um, I don't know what I would do there. Let's see. Would you say Facebook stock price right now is undervalued? Yes. That's why I, pers I made a video about buying Facebook stock. What would different cases result in different wax? Uh, it's not that different cases would result in different wax. It's like, what do you think the wax should be? And if you want to make it more, it more conservative, then you make it more conservative. Does the value you calculate based on the assumption that you have control of the company? Uh, not really sure about that, what that question means. What reading materials do you recommend? Um, I have a list of books in my description. So those are the books I recommend. There's one called Hedge Fund Market Wizards, which I think is really good. The interviews with a lot of hedge fund managers. Um, Barry, there was a moment when you're doing really good where you were worried it wasn't going to work out and it's a brand moment of joy when you thought it'd be successful. Uh, thanks for the thoughtful question there. Uh, let's see when it wasn't going to work out honestly i kind of just kept doing it and then didn't really worry about what was going to happen because i just really liked what i was doing and there's been like moments where things have stalled and growth hasn't been that good so i think that's when i kind of like at times i was like oh, i don't really know what's going to happen but in terms of joy as a a moment of joy um i'm just taking it each day day by day pretty pretty much uh what stocks am i in uh, i don't want to kind of list all of them but facebook is one i would buy um does financial edge have the same brand rep as wall street prep on terms of resume i don't think either really looks better because uh i don't really think it should be I don't think it should be um, something you want you do for your resume. It's more about what you learn. And financial and, and Wall Street Prep are like modeling uh, companies or, or what I don't know what, you, what do you call it? Modeling um, prep companies. So long-term capital management. I don't agree with your valuation, but I respect you sharing your thoughts online. It's good. Yeah, thank you. And I, I appreciate, you know, back and forth. I don't think my, what I say is the end all be all, right? So I think I'll definitely take a more look at the terminal growth rate theory and see if maybe, you know, for tech companies using a high terminal growth rate is not suggested. Um, maybe equity research is using that to kind of boost up their numbers to catch up to the current prices. Like that's possible. Um, Sean, thanks a lot. Just want to say appreciate your content. Uh, thank you, Sean. Uh, just preparing, preparing this model change your approach to your Facebook investment. Um, I don't think so because I think even just looking, uh, one thing I should probably show you guys is what I kind of referred to earlier. The, the reason that even doing a DCF for Facebook is not really super super important is because if you look at their trading multiples they're already so convincing that facebook is so cheap so for example facebook just looking at their ebitda multiples so well we're looking at your revenue growth like pretty high compared to the rest of the big tech companies in the world profit margins pretty high well, this might be too much data I kind of talked about this in my video, actually. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, EBITDA multiples, they're just like the lowest versus their entire peer set, right? It's just, and they have really crazy high EBITDA margins, profit margins, growth rates pretty solid. So I just don't really see why Facebook should be trading at such a discount to all their peers. Um, just based on these numbers, and I think the company has a lot of like qualitative issues, but I think they'll be fine in the long run. Uh, okay, a bunch of questions. All right, I'm gonna leave the time for like a few more minutes for questions. Um, am I CFA? No. Can Ben? Can we get a retroactively backdated Aesthetic Studio DCF? Haha. <laughs> no, you don't want to see that, Richie. Uh, thanks for sharing DCF, even though we don't agree. No problem. I'm going to hop off. No, nope. uh, thanks for joining Andy and Joseph. And thanks Wolfgang for joining as well. Um, Emil, term of growth rate has nothing to do with fixed number. It just can't be higher than the real growth rate. For sure. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely look into that point a little more. Um, Cause like I said, maybe I have the incorrect information as well. Um, but I don't think it affects this model that much because right now I'm using a 3%, which is like not crazy. Even if I change this to 2.5%, I don't think it's going to really change the analysis that much. So, because that was earlier. Oops. Yeah, anyway. Um... Can you actually put an actual value on crypto? Uh, I, I've, I've been wondering that. I might try to do that. Um, all right, but I'm going to sign off. And thank you all for joining. Again, as always, like I'm so surprised that so many of you guys want to join. And I will definitely try to do more live streams in the future. And you can follow Instagram for live updates or updates on announcements on whenever I actually do the streams. And I will, yeah, uh, keep doing these as much as I can. Thanks all for joining. Catch you guys later.